Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. This is one of my basic skills videos and in this video we're going to cover how to, uh, to test the resistance of a HT lead. Now HT leads go between um, your distributor and the spark plug um, or a coil pack and a spark plug. Some cars now don't have HT leads, they have coil over you know, a separate coil for each spark plug that sits on top of the engine. Uh, those manufacturers are starting to realize that's not the best idea in the world because the vibration and heat and stuff causes them to fail. Um, okay, so HT leads. There's different types. Old school, they used to have a copper core, uh, and then the newer ones tend to have like a carbon um, center to them, uh, the center of the wire. Uh, and there's different ways that they insulate as well. This is um, a rubber coating on the main HT lead, and it's got silicon type um, what they call sheaths, boots at each end. And you need to know all that kind of stuff before you can relate your specifications. Now, as regards specs, if you've got the old school copper, so say it's an old BSA motorcycle or um, an old, I don't know, Hillman Imp, that kind of thing, they've probably got uh, copper core HT leads as original fitment, then the HT lead, regardless of the length, should be somewhere between 1 and 6.5 kilo ohms and they don't stipulate any length and obviously the longer the HT is going to get the, the higher the resistance is going to be but it should always be below 6.5 kilo ohms. I don't have a copper core one here to test so that's not going to work. Um, there's also what's called an inductive resistor type um, which is what this one is. This is an inductive resistor type HT lead and the spec for that is per meter of length. So that's 2.2 kilo ohms up to 8 kilo ohms. And that's for the inductive resistor kind of HT leads. Uh, there's also a carbon resistor type, which is 10 kilo ohms to 23 kilo ohms resistance per meter. Now, chances are your HT lead isn't going to be exactly a meter long. And this one isn't. This is 60 centimeters. Um, and when you measure them, you really don't, don't just measure to the boots because the actual... Um, HT lead really is as long as the fitting where it goes onto the spark plug at this end and where it crimps onto the, uh, the little connector at this end. Okay, so first of all, we need to measure the length of the HT lead in order to be able to calculate what the spec would be for this length of, of lead. Now, the actual lead itself goes up to about there at this end and about there. At that end. So that's the distance we need to measure. Don't just measure up to the plug itself because the lead does go further than that. So, pretty easy. There's the 30 centimeter mark, just there, look. And remaining is, oh, look at that, bang on 60 centimeters. That was easy. Okay. So, to get a spec for that, all we need to do, being, it, being an inductive resistor type HT lead, is to times the 2.2 kilo ohms, which is the minimum spec, uh, by, one, by 0 0.6, and that gives us 1.32 kilo ohms. Um, and then the maximum, the highest point of spec per meter is 8 kilo ohms, times that by 0.6, and we get 4.8 kilo ohms. So this needs to read somewhere in the region of 1.32 kilo ohms to 4.8 kilo ohms. And to, to take a reading, all we do is get our multimeter. We, as you've probably seen before, we move that to the ohms setting. Now at the moment it's on mega ohms, so we need to change that. We need to go by changing the range, hopefully. Hang on. Oh, wrong one. Change the range. That will take us to kilo ohms and we want to be on the 20 kilo ohm setting we've only got um, you know not enough decimal points there so we'll press it again and hey presto we're now on the correct setting okay okay so the lead is 60 centimeters long and now to take the resistance so we've got our meter and we'll do an internal meter test it probably will come up with zero yes it does so we don't need to take into account the resistance of the leads for this particular test because it doesn't register and if we stick one end it doesn't matter which way around they go one end in there 
try and get a good contact and then one end inside the lead here so we've got one end there one end in there and what have we got okay always take the lowest reading by the way so we'll just wait for it to settle okay so 8.02018 bang on 8 so we've got 8 kilo ohms was our reading so 8 kilo ohms and our lead was 60 centimeters long okay so the, the specification get rid of the meter now so the spec per meter For this inductive resistor type lead was 2.2 kilo ohms to 8 kilo ohms per meter. Now ours was only 60 centimeters long, so we just did 2.2 times 0 0.6. That gives us the minimum, which was 1.32 kilo ohms, and the maximum was uh, da, 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 specification was 8 kilo ohms but times that by 0 0.6 gives us 4.8 kilo ohms now our reading was 8 kilo ohms 8 kilo ohms is way over over resistance within the spec so that is a huge fail okay so this HT lead purely based on its resistance readings is a fail. It's a drastic fail. It's, a got, it's got basically about double the resistance to what it should have um, for a lead this length of this type of um, build, this type of lead which is an inductive resistor type. Now, um, hey, if you're going to change one, you change all of them. Don't mess around just changing one lead. And if one fails, then you should replace all of them. Um, so there you go. Obviously, when you're testing HT leads as well, you're checking them out. Do a visual check first. Any kind of damage, if it's loose on the plug, if it's loose on the, on the distributor cap, uh, any cracks, any signs of burning, anything like that um, is, is a fail straight away and you should replace them. Um, also, when you're fitting your new HT leads, one HT lead should never touch another HT lead. This is why manufacturers have gone to all that trouble of making little plastic brackets all over the place for these to clip into. Um, there's far more chance of these things failing if they're touching each other. Plus of course they can rub through, you know, they can wear and the insulation gets damaged and that again can cause problems. On the old school cars that ran on a points system they used to run about 40,000 volts on the, on the high tension circuit. Um, which, okay, it sounds an awful lot, but it's, it's nowhere near what modern fuel-injected cars, cars run at, which is going to be 80,000 to 100,000 volts on the HT system. And when you get right up there with that kind of voltage, it becomes far more critical to have really high-quality HT leads that are con con going to contain that voltage and stop it leaking off to earth somewhere whilst it's travelling down to the spark plug. Um, Another little trick, if you're really struggling to find a problem why you've got a misfire, is put your, you know, pop the bonnet when, the, when, the, when it's pitch black outside, pop the bonnet, start the engine up, turn your torch off, and look around. Don't touch anything, but just look around for any arcing. You know, you might even hear it, you know, and you may, you may even see the little spark jumping from a HT lead down to earth. And if that happens, if the spark escapes through the insulation and gets down to earth, you can guarantee there's no spark happening down at the spark plug. There's your problem. Okay, there will be other videos covering uh, testing coils and that kind of stuff. They're all a bit further down the line. But HT leads, really important. Oh, one more thing. Don't forget the king lead. That's the one that goes from the ignition coil to the distributor cap. Okay, I uh, hope you found that helpful. My name is Andy Young. I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. This is one of my basic skills videos. If you've got any questions or comments, 
leave them down the bottom please and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you've got any ideas, if you can't find a particular video that you, uh, you're looking for uh, and it's not on YouTube, uh, then you know, leave me a comment, I'll make you the video. I can't guarantee it, but I'll do my very best. Uh, also remember to subscribe to the channel, I think it's up there somewhere or it's down there, ah, I never remember. Uh, if you subscribe then you're going to get notifications about all the new videos that have been uploaded every week. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers. Over and out.